Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your time. Gorgeous film, cross the board, acting, costumes, music. It was dope and I loved it. Beginning with you, Emma, I have to know when you finally see yourself in the full regalia, any any version of it throughout the film, how do you react to yourself? Do you is it like yes, or do you kind of does it send you deeper into the method and ready to go out there and film? Uh, to be honest with you, this is such an embarrassing answer because I am not a person that, um, I, I don't have social media, so there's no real reason for me to be taking uh, what we know as selfies. But I took one in like every single costume of this movie. I was like, the hair and makeup was so cool and the costumes were so incredible that I was like, I have to have this on my phone just to look at it again because it's only in the movie for a second. So I was very, very uh, blown away. And really, honestly, that just kind of speaks to what Jenny Bevan, who's the costume designer and what Nadia Stacey, who designed the hair and makeup, did. It was like, they, I got to wear their art on me. And that was such a, such a dream. They did such an incredible job that it was, um, yeah, it was an honor just to get to kind of wear everything they had created. Everything about the project just amplified all of your all respective abilities as performers. The script was phenomenal and your performances were just, it was just, it was so good. Joel, for Jasper, when he comes into contact with Estella Corolla for the first time, he's very perspective, uh, perceptive in that. He sees there's something wrong, there's something broken. What is that about him that he has the ability to recognize that quality in her? I guess it's just empathy, isn't it? I like a level of empathy and a level of understanding because I guess in the story, they've all kind of been from the same-ish place. They're all kind of orphans, I guess. And so it's just a level of like understanding somebody else's situation, I guess, mm -hmm. I think. For, and for, but for Paul, Paul, who is also part of this tree, uh, your character, Horace, is part of this trio. Um, he has more of a lighter approach to it, even though he has the understanding his approach to their day-to-day -day life is lighter. How do, what is it in his personality that also makes him equally perceptive, but not as heavy in the way that he navigates with Estella? Um, I think, you know, I don't know that Horace is as perceptive as Jasper. I think Jasper is a little bit more of a soulful uh, higher EQ, emotional IQ than, than Horace. I think Horace is the type that if you tell him you're in trouble, he'll help you out and he'll be there for you. But I don't know that he's perceiving it the same way Jasper is. Um, but yeah, I love the trio in this movie. I love the relationships. And I feel like me, Emma and Joel all really did get, get along and loved hanging out. And hopefully some of that shows up on, on screen too. It, it does. The, the three of you all working together and just some of the intricacies of the robberies and all the things that you guys are doing worked really well together. Emma, with uh, Estella, with Estella, usually when we see the origin story of a future villain, it's kind of a pitch. It's a growth into that persona with her. She started that way, then kind of backtracked and then grew further into it. How is that different for you as a performer instead of a kind of like a slow burn into who the character is going to evolve into at the end versus starting, going back, and then, you know, they're growing into their eventual full self. So. Oh, hello? Do you, are, we, are we back hello? again? You froze for a second. Uh oh You were oh, freezing I'm so up. Sorry. Oh, no, I'm no, so no. sorry. No, I, I think we got, I think I, I got the question though, no, I meant it was, it was, um, it, yeah, I mean, I think what was really interesting to kind of get to explore was the nature versus nurture sort of aspect of her. And, and the fact that she's, she's actively suppressing Cruella throughout her kind of childhood and as her life goes on and it pops out in little moments. And that's, what's fun about Estella too, is that Estella is not like a, a, a wilting kind of like delicate flower she's she's really feisty and full of life and um has a lot of you know spunk herself and then Cruella is a whole other level of that that really sort of like sheds any any care about what society might think and just is like 
fully, fully embodied as, as what I think Estella had always wished to be. So um, it was, it was really interesting to, to find little moments for Cruella to pop out in Estella's, um, you know, daily life and, and uh, get to just shed more and more. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much, everyone. This film is magnificent and I enjoyed you all. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank Take care. You. Have a good day. Kirby, you look beautiful. I love Kirby. the dancing knots. Yeah. I was going to say, you look amazing. This Cruella inspired outfit. Thank you. I had to. I had to take the necklace off. I, it was over the top, but that's okay. I should have kept that's it. That's what Coco Chanel says, right? She says, when you get dressed, you take one accessory off. I do it constantly. Well, you look gorgeous today. The whole thing is given. And this whole movie is given from the acting, the sounds, the costuming, the performances. This is a beautiful film. And Anita's relationship with Cruella, historically, we know it's going yeah. to be something very, very different. But yeah. every story has an origin. And in here, it's a pleasant origin. And what do you think that Anita does for Cruella in this instance? Because it's very different from where they end up in the future. Yeah, I think what's really interesting is Anita is one of the few characters, uh, obviously Jasper and Horace met um, Cruella once she, or Estella, you know, once she, she's, once she's had a lot of her trauma, obviously her childhood trauma, and Anita knows her from before that. So I think what Anita does is kind of, she's someone who, though they have fallen out of contact, they, they reconnect as adults. She's someone who understands the Cruella now and why she is that way. You know, she saw her at school, she understands what's happened. And I think that's really interesting because for most people, when you meet someone as an adult, that you take them for who they are, but what you don't realize is how much of a life, how much how much their environmentals, environmental factors have affected them and how much of a life they've lived before the person you meet as an adult. As we meet the different ages of your, of your character, Anita, I kept thinking of a reason or a season. Everyone comes in and Anita's always there at these critical moments in her life. And in this case, to her benefit yeah. as, as, as Anita kind of navigates through with her, what was the most enjoyable parts of, of being that character, being a, like having a front row seat to yeah. the beginnings of a historical villain? Well, I mean, I literally had a front row seat at a lot of things. Like she's there, you know, Anita's snapping away at fashion shows and doing all that stuff. So that was awesome. But I think having a front row seat to, to a villain, I think what it does is, for me, it's really exciting because we don't know where this is going to go. It's just, I think that this, not only is this an origin story, and so you find out how Cruella came to be, it also sets it up in such a beautiful way where it could go anywhere. And to me, it feels like Anita is part of that potential. She's part of this world percolating, and we don't know where her and Cruella's relationship goes. Mm -hmm. So how would, how would you say, you look very beautiful today. How would Anita grade Kirby's fashion sense today? Because she's there, she's chronicling, she's shooting, she's writing. You know, what would you want her to say about your fashion style and your fashion sense? I hope she would like it. I mean, I think what Anita and I share is like, we rock the natural hair look, we do our thing. I think she would, I think she would rate it pretty highly. I, I hope that I do Anita proud. Mm -hmm. You definitely do. A lot of people have been looking forward to seeing this film. We all have our attachments to 101 Dalmatians, and we never get to know what brings the characters to that point. In yeah. this case, we have a person who's going to evolve that we never see. We never see villains really fully embracing that about themselves as a young age. And this, in this case, Emma's character, Koala, steps into it almost immediately, knowing who she is from birth. For Anita, we she mor metamorphosizes into something different. What is the, at the core the best quality about her that will serve her in her future evolution? Um, I think the best quality about Anita that will serve her going forward is that she's not judgmental. And that's something that I, I that was kind of my takeaway from past iterations of Anita. I think people have described her as naive or kind or whatever. Um, but for me, I think the heart of that, the heart of even naivete and, and true kindness, I think, is an ability to not judge, to take people as they are. And so for me, I think that's the quality that serves Anita. And that's why she's able to have this relationship with, with Cruella and toe the line. I mean, 
she understands that Corella has a dark side. She's not necessarily judgmental of it, but it's, but she's not unknowing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I thank you for your time. I love this movie. You were fantastic. The whole thing was great. And I can't wait to talk about it with other people. Thank you so much. Thanks, Deandra. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.